thank you all. I, I, I'm sure we're going to give you quite a bit of things to tweet about. So I know that by the end of this conversation with, with Kashif and myself, we'll definitely be trending in Texas and maybe nationwide. Uh, so over the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk about uh, customer experience and how central and important customer experience is to the future of the utility industry. And I have a, a real, the real pleasure of bringing up Kashif Ansari onto the stage. Kashif is the CEO of Revolution GmbH and the retail partner at Energy Consulting. Now, Energy is a, a uh, global utility. Kashif, come on and join me up here. Uh, so, Kashif is responsible for leading Energy's new digital attacker platform. It's customer centric, data driven, and digital first, aiming to provide a new proposition to energy customers around Europe and North America. Kashif's background as the retail partner of Energy Consulting made him accountable for the delivery of both B2C and B2B strategies for the 23 million customers Energy serves with electricity and gas. So, Kashif, welcome over to Texas and welcome to the United States. It's great to have you here. It's a pleasure to here. Uh, so for those in the audience that didn't get to see the, the wonderful uh, workshop that Energy put on with Graham and Mac uh, earlier so talking cool. about digital customer experience, can you tell us a little bit about Energy and Energy Consulting? Sure. Um, maybe first I was born and raised in Germany, so my language skills, um, my, my English is not my mother tongue. So if I say anything that doesn't make sense to you, then blame it on my language skills. If it makes sense to you, then of course it's intended. Um, Energy is uh, one of the biggest utilities in Europe, basically, based in Germany. We um, do roughly $50 billion of revenue per year, <coughs> after 40,000 employees. Across 11 countries, we are serving 23 million customers uh, with gas and electricity. And we are um, also the third largest offshore wind developer uh, in the world. Um, that's basically energy in a nutshell. And Energy Consulting is a 100% subsidiary which uh, provides consulting services, classical management consulting services to energy, but also to companies outside of energy. Um, so what we saw is also that we have converging industries, for example, the automotive industry that has a huge demand in consulting for energy-related services or topics, uh, which we cater, for example. And uh, we have an office in Boston. Um, we are based in Germany and Essen have different offices in Germany. We also have a joint venture in the Middle East with the Dubai Energy and Water Authority. Um, we're also in London and in Prague. So we have a quite an international footprint. And um, that's basically energy consulting. And uh, maybe to myself a little bit, um, I have been um, starting my career in the automotive industry indeed. I started with Audi then had the pleasure to work with Porsche uh, before I joined energy consulting, a completely new field for me. So petrol-headed car guy coming to the energy industry yes. um, and learning that e-mobility is the new thing. Uh, was quite intense and interesting, but I had really great chances in developing the B2C strategy, for example, and uh, that was uh, also a chance for me where I was appointed CEO for our digital attacker, which is basically a greenfield energy provider, uh, where we serve our clients completely in a digital, I would say, second to none customer experience, at least with regards to utility. Thank you, Kashif. You know, for the audience, we won't be speaking in German. My German is just <laughs> terrible. His English, as you can see, is quite excellent. But uh, you mentioned the automotive industry. Both of us have spent part of our career, you spent a significant portion of your career in the automotive industry, an industry that, that preceded utilities with a focus on customer experience and creating a customer-centric business model. Why, why does customer experience matter so much for the utility industry, and, and how can we catch up a little bit? So maybe a two-folded answer, um, dividing Europe and US a little bit, and I totally agree to Paula that the problems are the same, um, with different tweaks to it. So the European market is 
uh, very competitive. You have churn rates of 20 to 30 percent per year that you lose in the retail business. So you have to somehow um, fill up the customer base, and the better thing is not to lose them at all. Um, this is done by, by excellent customer experience also, which is a massive trigger. But on the other hand, the transformation of the utility business, going from just providing commodity, electricity, and gas to energy-related services, even to smart home hardware, is a completely different story. And suddenly, you're in a competition field with Amazon. Uh, um, to sell hardware, and the customer doesn't expect any customer experience that is lower than what he or she is used to. And um, normally the utilities, with all the respect, um, and I've of course not seen every utility, are far away from the customer experience that Amazon or other tech companies are providing. Um, so if we really want to move forward from just providing commodity, then uh, customer experience is one of the key factors to really um, play that game. I think that's such an important point because our customers, they're not comparing CPS Energy or Austin Energy or PGE Energy uh, to each other. Maybe if they move from Essen over to San Antonio or Austin, they might reflect back on that. But they're comparing us to what's going on with our airline, we, you know, when they fly on Delta, United, or Lufthansa, they're comparing us to Amazon. And so how, how can we compete in that marketplace for ideas? Uh, I think is so crucial. And, and maybe that, I think that leads pretty nicely into, you know, how Energy's uh, customer experience approach is different to the traditional utility. Uh, and, and where is that making the biggest difference for you? One of the biggest mistakes we as utilities did is that customer experience might cost money and we're not going to do it. Uh, in the end, it saves a lot of money um, if you please the customer. So we started with understanding the customer, the customer needs, uh, the demands, which we did also with a lot of data. Uh, so you have data points. You are owning the customer uh, in your, in your uh, customer account, so you know a lot about the customer, but you're not leveraging what you know about the customer. And that was basically the next step to understand what the customer is about. Um, and then picking up really specific, as we call it, journeys. So an I join journey, I become a customer of a utility. Or uh, what we did in Europe is picking the I move journey. Because one of the major levers for losing customers is when the customer um, moves the house to a different apartment or buys a new house. Then suddenly, energy is interesting. And um, they start they start to uh, tackle the problem, and then they see that there is maybe a cheaper one, a better one, and uh, we lose the customer. So we started with the I move journey, and we didn't do a lot of big strategies, etc. We just went to the core of what the customer experiences during that I move journey. And uh, one example I would like to give is that. According to the data we had, we could forecast when a customer was interested in himself for moving services. So we leveraged that data proactively uh, communicating to the customer, hey, if you're interested in moving your house, let us take care of your energy services. Um, you would save energy, and by the way, here is a voucher for a moving service. You know? And by that, we could massively re reduce the churn coming out of moving. I think that's such a crucial point. Uh, I mean, and not every move is going to be the same. Some people are moving because they've they've had a, a great promotion at work, and so yeah. they're, they're they're moving with their family. And then there are other situations where they might not be so fortunate. So how how are you using that data to really key in on that individual customer and that individual experience and help them through that transition period in their life must be so important. Yeah, so what we can see also on the, on the address data that we are provided, also for the, for the new address, uh, if it's a single house, if it's an apartment within an apartment block, so we can individualize, of course, the experience that is necessary for the, for the customer. So if we know that the house is newly being built, we talk about a whole different product proposition. We talk about energy efficiency, we talk about smart home, we talk about PV, we talk about um, energy storage, possibly, and you need to have a comprehensive approach to the customer to really make a customized offer. So you cannot 
do it the way we used to do it. So here is a commodity offer, and then there comes the PV guy. Are you interested in PV? And oh, by the way, um, we have a different guy um, dealing with storage. Uh, is that maybe also interesting? No, it meets the holistic concept and the added value for the client, for the customers. You talked about that customization, and that reminds me of, of your experience with, with Audi and Porsche. What, what did that experience? Uh, with two companies that were so focused on, the, on serving the end use customer with a very specific product, uh, inform you as you moved over to the utility industry? So it was a challenge. I, I remember my, my first weeks when I uh, was trying to transfer customer experience knowledge from Porsche to, to Energy. It was like, yeah, that's a different industry that doesn't work here. <laughs> uh, nice examples, but. It's a good thought. Um, it's a good thought, exactly. That was the feedback. But um, the, the way Porsche, for example, has done it across all countries, they have like 120 something customer touch points standardized across every country they are in. And that's not just 11 like Lynching. On the other, on the other hand, they, um, they have a very local approach to it. So I also I quote Paul on this think global, act global. Mm -hmm. Um, when you look at the UK market, for example, once you ordered a new Porsche Carrera, um, you were given an invitation to the racetrack. Um, and then you got to drive the 911 Carrera on the racetrack, but with way more specs than you ordered from the factory. <laughs> so the customers were sitting there, they were of course happy that they were on the racetrack. And they were, what is that feature actually? Did I order that? No, you didn't. And uh, basically, they set off the cost for the event um, more than uh, three times in additional revenue that they sold to the client because the, the, the customer could experience that the additional features might make sense or make fun or are useless but nice to have. And um, that, that's what they did. And the approach of what, what the customer is all about, leveraging the data, so what, what order did the customer place? Um, how can I increase my attention for the customer? What does he like? And combining this to a proposition that in the end uh, creates a bottom line impact. That was amazing. And this is what we basically also um, did at Energy. That, that opportunity to, you know, for lack of a better phrase, cross-sell, upsell, yeah. kind of leads me to this next thought. Uh, about the electrification movement and the electrification of, of mobility. Uh, this has a really an analyst, Z prime research, we've done a lot of work on this. We, we look at the potential impact on the grid, on utilities for uh, increased load, increased revenue. Uh, how can utilities optimize their customer experience now to take advantage of the growing EV that's coming over the next two to five to ten years? Yeah, so I don't have the perfect answer for every utility, but there are different um, strategic directions you can take. So either you want to go the way of a charge point operator and install hardware, operate the hardware, and basically sell the energy in that hardware. But there is also the way of going a completely different direction in terms of having your own soft and hardware and basically sell it to charge point operators. Um, and leverage the data on it. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, which path you choose, um, the customer experience will be key. And the way I see it, e mobility is still at the beginning, um, especially when you look into Germany, because it's, uh, it's far ahead of Germany actually. You have like, countries like Norway, where basically the EV um, uptake rate is, is like 50% of all new cars, and even higher. Um, then you are selling energy to a customer you might already have, but through a different, uh, let's call it device or uh, touch point, is the right word. So just imagine the customer who is in, let's say, energy um, power customer who has an electric vehicle now and drives this vehicle across Europe. You don't want to have 15, 15 fueling cards for each charge point operator that you want to identify yourself at the charge pole and go across the river. So the task of the utility must be 
to create a seamless customer experience so you're an energy customer and you can charge your car wherever you are in Europe. We'll take care of it. And that's basically what we also do. We teamed up with a, with a fuel car operator, actually, um, who also has to transform its business. And we are providing the service now um, across Europe. So we are we are handling the roaming, for example, in the back, but the customer doesn't have to do anything. So just plugs in the car, can fuel it up, and go across Europe. Um, so this is one of the major um, customer journeys that EV drivers will have. But on the other hand, you will see the systems as a whole. So if you look at a car dealership, for example. There is a massive transformation. If you have an EV rate of 5 to 10 percent today and 50 percent in the future, what does that mean for the infrastructure of the car dealership? Grid connections. Um, how can I uh, provide my own energy? Um, so generation assets uh, on a small scale on that dealership. Up to what does it mean for a service? We had a discussion with Audi, for example, where we said, okay you are probably going to load all the electric vehicles that are being serviced. And they were asked, no, we're not. We're not fueling it up today, so why won't we, why won't we do it in the future? It's like, yeah, but you don't want your customer to go off the lot and then go charging the vehicle for 30 minutes until we drive a bit further. They were like, yeah, that's the point. Um, so it, it really changes the entire customer experience, not only for utilities, but for the entire industry. And um, I think this is where, especially utilities um, and utility-related services can create an impact because the car industry is not a specialist in that. That's a great point. Uh, and as we, as we look to the future, uh, utilities across the globe, what, what, can, what can we learn from the energy footprint that you have in 23 different countries? What can, what can other utilities take away around customer experience as we look to maximize that customer connection in the 21st century. So, um, I mean, I'm also a consultant, and the way you would usually do it as consultants, get the consultants in, they do a brilliant strategy, and then tell you how to do it, and then say goodbye with a lot of PowerPoint slides. And um, that's exactly not the way how did you did it. Uh, what we did is we started really at the core, at the heart of the operations and made a proof of concept in terms of methodology works uh, to create an impact and by the time we're speaking now we have created an impact of roughly 70 million US dollars on the bottom line impact just out of our customer experience um, um, activities we have done. Um, so to really do the operational stuff, show that the method works, and then out of a sudden, there is a there is a pull from, and we're talking large scale corporations, but also smaller uh, operations. Everywhere where there is success, there are people who want to participate, even if they said that's not a good thing to do. So the people that told me that we cannot apply uh, the Porsche stuff in energy, um, they were quite convinced when we when we changed also the journeys. Um, so. Yeah, convince them, and then take it from there. Give them capabilities, and it's a complete cultural change that we had to go through uh, in, in terms of being customer centric, but also creating impact. So you have an international team that joins um, in one country for two days or three days, and then they go back to their country within that same week and implement all the changes that they develop in that week. So also the time lag between concept and uh, implementation has, is, a, is a massive factor for convincing people to create impact. And from there we took the strategy, and that's, that, that was the final piece actually, the strategy, not the first. You, you incorporated all this data, all, all, this, all this learning, before you came up with the strategy, you, you, and, and that was the key for you. Understanding the customer, the customer demand, and then picking up one of the most essential journeys. I think that's so crucial because as opposed to, and I'm sure you went into multiple hypotheses about how this might impact the customer, but as opposed to, to prejudicing that with the idea that this is, this is the approach that we're going to take with, with our customers, uh, you, you took a look at, at what the data actually showed before coming up with how you actually, the strategy to deliver that. That all that best practice customer experience. Yeah, 
I have to say yes. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, so we've got a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any questions for Kashif? I think we've got a question. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about the customer experience. Could you just wait one second so we get the microphone on you there? Thank you. So it's not directly with you. We're talking about customer experience with electric vehicles. It takes an hour to charge a vehicle like a Tesla fully. If you're driving them from here to 500 miles away and got to stop twice to do an extra hour to charge, it doesn't yield a very high quality customer experience. Uh, what can utilities do to accelerate the way in which these vehicles are charged? Great question. Yeah, actually, yeah, this is a great question, and it's one of the questions we are currently trying to answer. Um, so, one of the discussions we are having is um, that we provide joint services with the um, automotive OEM and the utility, for example, to give updates to the car, because we know the car is sitting there and we don't want to be in the car while it's been having an update. But what we also do, for example, is we create um, mobility hubs where the, the time of charging can be used for something else. So we, will, we'll, we are trying to build uh, mobility hubs where there's a laundry, there's a service, you can have also the the last mile um, um, transportation in bigger cities, in bigger areas. Um, so basically, leverage the time with the customer, exactly that one hour, or if you come to high performance charging, 30 minutes is the spend Or you get a voucher even for the next restaurant that is nearby the charging uh, pole, actually. And then you have a nice lunch or dinner while the car is charging. Well, Kashif, I really appreciate your time. And I just want to, I want to take a quick second to, to plug uh, an opportunity to speak with you. You've come all this way from Germany. There is so much that I think that North American utilities can learn from the, from the German model right now, how you're incorporating uh, distributed energy resources, renewable energy across the board, but particularly around customer experience. And so for those people that do want to have a quick chat with Kashif uh, this evening, uh, we've got a networking reception that goes from 5 to 7 a little bit afterwards, but Kashif will, will have made himself available for, for people to chat at, at 6.30 at the Speaker's Lounge. So uh, do seek him out and, and have that opportunity to have that cross uh, transatlantic uh, conversation. Thank you so much. Let's do that.